I'll probably use Explorer uh, to navigate us through. So basically, Explorer and some terminal. Basically, the blockchain consists like the, from some of the na from the name you may assume that blocks are the core piece of it, but it's it doesn't help. I would say most of the time. So let me start from where the like how the blockchain builds up and where it starts and how it grows. So what we uh, have is our near core is a piece of software which defines the behavior and the the rules uh, how like the system will work. And there is uh, some configuration that you need to start from. And this configuration is uh, is called Genesis. So basically, Genesis is a com configuration that uh, all the parties uh, in the dis dis decentralized world agree upon, and they uh, review it. Many, so they should review it. Uh, let's put it this way. I don't believe many of them will really go into every single detail. Uh, but overall, there, there is a, like a, an opportunity to do so. Uh, there, there is a time when this configuration was created. Uh, there is a name of the network that we use for like, human readable needs. There is a height uh, of, uh, like, uh, we'll talk about it a bit later. But uh, what I want to mention here that uh, a blockchain does not need to start from like completely scratch from like zero. And there are a lot of different obscure configuration, at least in near, in near core. Uh, there are the, the important part is the, that um, we have costs for different operations on the network. And these costs are uh, set in this file as well. We have a separate tool to estimate those calls. So we essentially compute, collect statistics on how long usually such operation takes and uh, record such metrics uh, for the future reference. So like how much would cost to, to create an action uh, or like, to, 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 to deploy something to create new account, uh, to call a function like on, on the base uh, on like a basic cost and per byte, whatever. Like uh, a lot of configuration, we don't need to understand them all right now. The the configuration also the initial configuration also needs need to state uh, who will be the initial uh, parties to boot up the network. So these are set in this validators uh, config. So these are these four were uh, for machines for servers that were uh, as it's easy to uh, reason enough states for near foundation was controlled by near foundation, and that's because uh, when we started uh, mainnet we essentially did silently. Uh, we didn't uh, announce it widely, and we wanted to make sure that it it, it runs for a while, and then we onboarded uh, validators uh, to the network. So that, that so in, initially our plan was to you know uh, collect all the distributed parties and uh, aggregate this Genesis file and boot the network from scratch uh, at this like at the same time, but. Uh, uh, last year, uh, during like our rush to release, we realized that it would be too much of the effort, and it would be uh, like quite hard to follow uh, for, to 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 make to to make uh, in like in time. Whenever we had any like deadline, we always like missed it. So instead, what we decided to go is to launch mainnet in phases. And you can hear that we refer to some uh, like phase two, for example, uh, thing, which essentially enabled what was the last phase to launch the mainnet. It unlocked uh, transfers, and that was the last piece. And there was phase one and phase zero. Those three phases starting with zero uh, were uh, happening last year. And uh, like all, all the configuration, you can refer, like try to uh, reason about them uh, in a way, but um, 
I covered most of the important settings uh, over there. And there is also the important piece over here is a re record, uh, which is essentially the state of the network, uh, which the, the nodes will uh, start with. Uh, without these records, like th there is no way. So if, if, for example, blockchain does not have an account, you, any accounts, uh, you cannot create a new transaction because you can confirm that your account belongs to the network. So it's natural for a blockchain to have this initial state. There is a thing called total supply. So it's an amount of near tokens uh, available on the network uh, when it starts. And uh, there are certain balances uh, on each of those accounts. By the way, it's in Yoktonir. Uh, so it's uh, 10 to the 24th power. So it's essentially like something around like this is five near, I believe, or something like, like that. So it's not like <laughs> ridiculously high, high uh, amounts. It's quite small, but uh, these uh, contributors uh, that near and foundation that near uh, were quite uh, loaded uh, balances, I believe. And also these uh, NF validator uh, accounts as well. So you can see that uh, there are like records of type account. And if you scroll down a bit, uh, you can see that there are contracts deployed, one contract deployed on near account. That's, uh, I, I will refer to this later when we will talk more about account system. But basically you can see that it was not deployed uh, by anybody. It was right in the, in the Genesis file. And uh, another was pulse.near. I guess it's a bot uh, account or something. And you can see there are access keys. Again, without access keys, even if you have accounts, without access keys, you can't uh, claim that it's your account, just providing the uh, you know account name, account ID. You always need uh, a signature. And to have a signature, you need to have a key pair and one of the, the public key should be recorded on the blockchain. So we can see that those accounts have uh, access keys. And this is, uh, this is basically all on the uh, Genesis side. We have all there is a data uh, record, which is essentially a state of that contract uh, that we just saw uh, the near account. And there are like some other configuration options just for near needs. Are there any questions so far? Nine. All right. So basically, this is the how the blockchain starts. You need this file, and you need the piece of software that, that understands it and can operate on top of uh, the protocol, with whatever like we, we, we call it. We, we just have numbers here, so protocol number 29. Uh, is what's uh, required to run uh, Genesis. So it's near protocol version 29, uh, whatever it means. And then you have these four machines, NF validators. Uh, so these are servers where we run near core. They boot up and start uh, operating. They have a routine, so it's it's, it's always it's an ongoing process, uh, which is called block production. So they essentially need to uh, well block production and chunk production chunks. I will cover them later. But overall, validators are in charge of uh, creating blocks and chunks. Uh, so they do it regularly, uh, every second or roughly every second uh, in Miracore, and you can see on. Uh, Explorer side uh, that uh, there is some average block time production. Um, and you can also see this number is changing. So essentially uh, uh, look up the latest, uh, I don't remember exactly, like uh, one minute, I guess, uh, time frame, and see how many blocks were created during that one last minute. Uh, and it's roughly 60 blocks uh, created in the last one minute. 
so that's how we uh, how this number uh, is counted. Uh, block height is essentially a number of uh, the, the block number uh, that is produced on the network. Uh, one thing I want to mention that it's monotonically increasing, but it it does not need to like it, not every block exists. Sometimes due to validators being offline, they skip their uh, uh, their turn and they don't produce a block. And then another validator will uh, come in and produce their block that is scheduled to produce uh, for them. So they. Uh, the 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 numbers the block height is not sequential, uh, in, meaning that, that there could be some you know, like missing blocks. In, in like in general, they are quite sequential. And usually, like most of them exist, but there are some hiccups here and there when you can observe that uh, quite many of them are missing. So every second we produce a new block. Uh, we started from 9 million block no number, almost 10 million blocks. This essentially means that we had mainnet uh, network running before that, which started from zero. But at some point, at this point, I believe, uh, we had some, I, I guess it was a bug or some behavior that we didn't want to deal with, uh, like to do a proper fix. So instead, given that the network was not under heavy use, we decided to dump uh, whatever was in the mainnet at that time. And that is uh, what you can observe here in, in the records, actually. So records uh, is the latest state uh, of the network, essentially. And at the point of 2 million or 9 million uh, 80, uh, whatever this hate, we had that state where we had just a few accounts yet, and some of them had some like balance changes and like some balances on, on them. And this happened last year in August 21st. Since then, we arrived to uh, 36 million uh, blocks. 36 uh, million blocks. Uh, is the latest block hate, so basically uh, 20, uh, 26, 27 million blocks later, uh, we arrived to a different state. We still can actually dump the network uh, as, as we did back then, but uh, unfortunately, like it's naturally, this uh, records array will be enormous and too big to 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 review, and it will, and given it's in JSON format, it will be like completely unreasonable to load. Uh, that's uh, what happened around a month ago with testnet. Actually, uh, testnet is not uh, that heavy, I would say, but still the current Genesis file, this one, for testnet. Uh, with records is five gigabyte JSON file. Uh, we, we call this process hard fork, even though it's like it's it's a wrong term. I would say uh, it's a hard reset. So we essentially reset the network to the to these values. Uh, we can edit it. The, we can edit the JSON file what, whenever whatever like uh, to whatever state we feel is needed. We could remove accounts, we could uh, uh, remove access keys, like anything uh, like that. So it's uh, it's not safe from blockchain point of view to have uh, hard resets. Uh, but for testnet, we decided to go that way because, well, it's a testnet, uh, not a huge deal seems, though I, I'm still... Uh, I, I cannot say that it was the best decision, but anyway, mainnet. So we we don't want to make this such, such hard uh, reset on mainnet because we will lose the history, and we can't really prove that these records will be correct. So it was it would be quite a uh, quite a major incident if we would need to do hard reset.
That's why we have a lot of migrations. We have a lot of uh, quirks here and there. And that's why we sometimes introduce new protocol version uh, just to patch certain behavior and uh, uh, bring uh, missing data that for some reason we like uh, didn't process uh, during the like operation of the network before. Uh, so we have quite a few bugs uh, that caused us uh, a few inconsistencies in the network. And we had to implement some patches with the protocol version upgrade. So that's how we uh, upgrade the network. Uh, but uh, let's get back to the core concepts. We have those validators. We started with four validators over here with the NF uh, validator, one, two, and three, and four. And they operate and they produce blocks, they produce chunks, that's fine. But how do we onboard new validators? We could we could have like a essentially a process where validator would just come and say, well, I want to start validating and we would uh, allow them to do so. But uh, that would be quite challenging to implement because those validators need to have history. Those validators need to be uh, ready to to operate. Also, the other like the schedule needs to be changed. As I, as I mentioned, there is a schedule uh, where each validator is allocated to produce certain block. Uh, there is no other validator can replace and like produce a block that is supposed to be generated by validator. Let's say an F validator two. So if a new validators would uh, immediately be onboarded to the network we will have uh, like a mess. So we introduced this concept of epochs. And essentially we have, uh, it's, it's like a voting mechanism for, like, uh, for a president or like a prime minister uh, where uh, instead of going through it every four years or four, five years, whatever, we go through it every 12 hours. Uh, or rather not even 12 hours, but epoch length, this number of blocks. This is like, if you if we have a block production uh, every second, and this, so we would assume that it's a number of seconds, it's roughly, it, it's, it's exactly 12 hours uh, long. I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, does it include the missing uh, blocks or not? I mean, it I mean the number, it does, okay. Yeah. So if, if there are missing blocks, they just like, okay, we keep going. So basically the, uh, let me, uh, there's no good instrument uh, right now, but, oh, actually it is. There is, there is an instrument, come on. There is a script uh, which is just a cron job. Um, so we started with this block uh, over here. So th this script uh, saves historical data uh, for each epoch. The uh, wh what exactly was the, the stats for the epoch? And as you can see, uh, the block height is like almost this like it, it's Oops. As you can see, it's exactly the epoch length variable here. However, sometimes this specific block, uh, 13 at the end, will be missing, and but you still need to have some block produced to conclude the end of the epoch. And that's why at some point you can see 13, 13, 13, 13. Okay, it was fine, but then it, it turned to be 17. Uh, what happened is essentially 
uh, there was there were no validators to produce those four blocks and only like uh, three, three blocks and only on the fourth uh, after the 13th uh, on, on the 17th block uh, we finally produce like some validator finally produced a block and the epoch uh, was ended or rather started a new epoch uh, or rather ended. Yeah, I guess it's it's a last last block in the epoch, so it's it's a end of the epoch. Does answer your question? Yeah, great, thank you. Um, so we have this uh, mechanism of epochs. Uh, they happen roughly every twelve hours, and the validators produce blocks. We can open any of the blocks. Uh, they they could be like they could. We call we call them like empty. Uh, hmm? It's it's hard to find the empty blocks these days. Uh, so the, there are no transactions in the block, but the block still is produced. Have timestamp of uh, when it was created. Well, it's finalized. They the like what I want to point out here is that validators produce blocks no matter what. Even if there is no transactions at all, uh, blocks are produced. That is because you cannot prove that there is like something does not exist. You can only prove that there there exists zero transactions when you produce a block. So that's the reason, and that's why we have uh, so many blocks which we could potentially uh, hide, and, and or or rather even not. Like have information about them in the first place, but we the blockchain needs to create those and uh, actually spend some resources to do that. Uh, um, yeah, and as you can see, the currently it seems like we have quite sequential block production, so there is no missing blocks over here. Uh, but it's uh, it, it could be that uh, like some validators would be offline and uh, at that point they will not produce uh, blocks. Uh, we are still in the works with, uh, uh, with on the Explorer side to, to have this similar page where you would see how many blocks were produced by each uh, validator. So you can see that uh, this validator uh, was expected to produce 400 blocks, uh, but only produced, uh, but but did not produce out of those 400, uh, it did not produce uh, one block. So it uh, it's I guess it's a, it's a weird statement. Uh, on like it's it's easier to look over here, I guess, actually. This seventeen is a good place. Um, so yeah, so our JSON RPC returns the following structure about every single validator, and there is uh, num num produced blocks and num expected blocks. So this validator, uh, so we control it, uh, was expected to produce this amount of blocks, but only produce one less than it was necessary. What What is even worse, this NF validator three uh, was totally offline during the, the whole epoch. So for some reason, uh, we had outage on that server. The network operated fine. We had uh, three out of four validators online uh, to progress network needs uh, uh, two thirds of the nodes uh, online. Yeah, go ahead. I have a question in this regard. Like, uh, for example, in this situation, we have four validators, a uh, mm -hmm. specific amount of blocks, like it's constant. And in the statistics, we have like uh, one validator completely missed the epoch. 
so it does it mean that uh, we actually miss uh, that amount of blocks? And how come in this file, like if we sum up all the expected blocks numbers, we won't get this uh, 43,020 blocks? Yeah, so actually I, I just realized that uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's an interesting thing, but uh, what, so if you sum up these numbers, uh, mm -hmm. two plus one plus one, you will see that it's four blocks more than is needed. And that's exactly why there is this uh, push to the block number. So basically uh, what, what this means that throughout the epoch, they produced uh, enough blocks, uh, the for, for, um, 4,300, uh, 43,000, uh, 200 blocks and then it seems like it was turn for uh, NF validator to produce a block then for NF validator 2 was uh, was scheduled to produce a block um, and they they missed it, those can, can I ask you to like uh, make a font bigger cuz like sorry about that it's... oh okay so there is uh, completely different numbers yeah <laughs> okay okay so, um, can yeah. I, so can if I we, add, yeah. uh, um, it's it's not about the, this uh, theme, but about previous theme. Uh, mm -hmm. Go ahead. I can, I can add the information. So when you when you are looking at the at the blocks and uh, looking at, at the number of transactions that were included in this block, even if uh, there is zero, uh, it does not mean that uh, nothing was. Uh, uh, nothing was making a, a this block because uh, it could be hard right now. Uh, apart from transactions, we have uh, receipts uh, and uh, it's possible, I just checked it, uh, uh, it's possible that this block has a receipt uh, process. Correct. Yeah, uh, I, I, I guess it's something like more deeper and uh, it should be covered after the receipt. So. And the receipts just... are very, yeah, receipts are, are very hard to understand, uh, even for or like uh, for the guys who know something about blockchain. So receipts are very weird, guys. It's, 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 it's not that hard, actually, but uh, so the only thing that I wanted to, to say is that if you are seeing zero, it doesn't mean that uh, nothing was made in this block. Yeah, uh, I, I will cover it right now then. Uh, that's a good point, actually. So here, here is the JSON RPC uh, uh, endpoint that is, uh, that is called block. Uh, we can provide params to it. We provide the block ID. Uh, we can specify either block height or block uh, hash uh, over here. And uh, what we have in, in response is the author. So the actually the validator name who produced the block. Uh, we have a list of uh, a chunks, a list of chunks. Uh, I will cover them a little bit later. And we have a header of the block that is produced. So we have uh, like a list of uh, validators who uh, approved uh, the block, so they essentially synced up and uh, they confirmed that um, the, the, there is a consensus and th these uh, validators uh, conclude that the block is final. Uh, there are some other useful information over here. Uh, what's interesting is there is a uh, like, uh, brief hash, which is the previous, uh, the hash of the previous block uh, there is a hash itself. Where is it? Yeah, it's it's hash. Over here, it's a block hash, and there is a height. So I, I just queried this number, and so it's no no surprise that we see it. And what else? Um, protocol version timestamp uh, is the 
uh, is a number in nanoseconds where the block was produced. Uh, there are like, quite like, extensive info over there, but we don't fo want to focus on that right now. I want to focus uh, for, for just now on chunks. So the nature of uh, near protocol is that we have uh, scalability in, in our system. Uh, we, we support uh, horizontal scalability of execution. Uh, meaning that we don't need every single validator in the network to validate every single transaction, every single block, every single uh, every single uh, list of transactions. Let's put it this way. Uh, we built sharding into near protocol design and blocks are essentially a virtual entity which does not include transactions by itself. Uh, blocks contain, like, uh, records the chunks that are included in the uh, in the block, and they don't care what's inside the chunk. They, the block only care about which chunks are included. And then each shard tracks uh, different shards. Shards uh, are just, like, there is a shard ID. Shard ID is a is an integer uh, from zero to n minus one, uh, where n is the number of shards. So basically, right now, near operate near, mainnet on near operates with single shard, um, which means that we don't leverage scalability yet. Uh, the reason is we just don't need it, uh, given that we only have like three transactions in a block, it's not a problem to handle uh, for near protocol. Uh, but overall in the future, we'll enable uh, the uh, feature, the, the support and configuration essentially. It will be a configuration change to uh, have more shards. And each shard uh, has their own, produce their own blocks uh, in, in a sense of regular uh, block other 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 blockchains, uh, but these uh, blocks on a shard uh, we call them chunks. So the the parts of uh, the final block that will be uh, produced, uh, and every uh, every chunk then has sort of the same property as a block, uh, and uh, chunks are the entities that uh, collect the transactions inside of them. And uh, that's where the execution happens. One anyway. question. So every chunk, so like every shard has like their chunk blockchain and then the blockchain has, like the block has N number of chunks. Yep. Okay, okay, cool. Though uh, some chunks can be missing, like if, if as, as uh, let's let's get back a little bit to to the block production that I covered. Like blocks could be missing because the validator is like not online. Uh, the blockchain will not get stalled. Uh, it will progress. Uh, there there will be a hiccup, but uh, it's like okay, we'll produce block not the next second, but the second after that. So there is no problem for the operation of the network. The same goes with chunks. Chunks are produced by like, different validators as well. And if chunk is missing, it's fine. Uh, block will still be produced. Um, in the case of a single shard, this could mean, well, then does this mean that we can all like have an empty list of chunks? Uh, in theory, you can view it this way. Like it, there could be blocks without chunks. Uh, in practice, in near protocol, again, just to uh, prove that something does not exist, you need to prove that something exists. And to, to do so, uh, when there is no chunks at all, in like a, a new, there is no new chunks to be included in the block, uh, block producer, the validator that is in charge of producing the block, will include the chunk from a previous known block. 
So it will ascend from the uh, JSON, like from the RPC point of view, uh, you will see that uh, from the RPC point of view and from the internals point of view, from the traffic that goes through, uh, you will observe that uh, some blocks include the chunk that is already included in it, like in a different block. Uh, you, what you usually want, what you usually uh, want to do with it is just to ignore the duplicate. So you ignore uh, the chunks that uh, this uh, height created it does not equal to the block height. Um, so I hope that it, that makes sense. I have another question while we're here. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought that uh, like wh why uh, especially validator wants to be a validator is because a reward like uh, producing the block is uh, rewarded by the network like by producing a new coin if I'm not mistaken mm -hmm. and this coin goes to the validator who produced the block. Uh, and currently, we can see that uh, field validator reward is zero. I guess it's deprecated. I, it's just deprecated field, okay. Uh, but uh, like, uh, do they get, have uh, rewards uh, on every block producing, or uh, they got a reward after the epoch? Like, they uh, they are rewarded on the epoch boundary. So when mm -hmm. they will the, on the in second uh, only mm -hmm. in, okay, at so the end so, of epoch they will be okay. So some some sort of virtual own... account and uh, counts how many blocks uh, each validator actually produced and how much was expected, and after that they uh, like rewarding. Yeah. So mm -hmm. let let me put uh, one comment and then we'll go to Sandy. Uh, mm -hmm. I uh, I want to mention that after the epoch ends, uh, all the validators perform the same operation. Uh, they count how many blocks were produced by each validator throughout the previous epoch. Uh, and if the number of expected, uh, so they, they compute the ratio essentially uh, of how many was expected and how many was actually produced so they, they see at this uh, to, to the, uh, compute this ratio. And if it's uh, less than 90%, a validator does not get any reward. Uh, if if a validator was uh, online for more than 90% of the time, so it, it has great uh, online, uh, they are rewarded according to this uh, uh, ratio and also according to the stake uh, that uh, they uh, they have. So if you look here, uh, different validators have different stake. So according to this number, uh, the, the, the higher the stake, the higher the, the reward. The reward is uh, uh, constant, but uh, it's, it's computed based on the stake uh, that each validator has, and this uh, on offline uh, uh -huh. can affect them. Uh, I, I, I thought that the uh, number of seeds, like number of blocks uh, which should produce a validator is computed based on the stake, but I can see it right it's, now it's, that... It's also this, like... Uh, so, yeah, but, uh, no, no, but number of seeds is, is a different metric. Number of seeds uh -huh. is the, how many blocks you will uh, need to produce. So you can mm -hmm. see this validator with so high yeah. stake expect, is expected to produce 400 blocks, uh, while this one ex is, is expected to produce only 145. Yeah, but uh, a little bit uh, weird, at the top, one of the top, can you scroll top, please? That's actually kind of weird yeah numbers have, here. like 10 millions of stake and he uh, it, have to it's, prove it, it's weird let, 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 let me see maybe no, no, normal numbers found the bug maybe we could uh, so basically this I, I guess they're sorted let's see yeah no they're not sorted but as you can see 
some gold digits like bison trails mm-hmm. they're mm-hmm. they're quite big uh, they expected to produce so many blocks while yeah. others uh, are expected to produce much less mm-hmm. I, I guess near staking has some sort of bug or yeah it could be mm-hmm. okay. yeah i don't think uh, i don't think the value is blocks i think it's uh it says in feather that is the number of epoch online I think those oh are... like uh, how many epochs uh they they were present present as a validator maybe uh online yeah, epochs yeah. yeah yeah thank you mario yeah. thanks yeah it's uh, so, sorry about the confusion uh, in fact Yeah, it's uh, it's on uh, on explore side is where we uh, see this number over here. Mm-hmm. So it's it's quite a you know obscure metric. Unless I told you, you would never guess what what these numbers. <laughs> yeah. mean. Uh, yeah. The new design will be better. Yes, uh, like everyone remind that Sandy want to ask. Yeah, yeah. Sandy. So oh, every time when you produce a block, you get all the rewards for that block from the transactions or not? No, you are allocated. So the reward is completely decoupled from the transactions. So no matter if even if there is no transactions in the network at all, uh, you will the validators will be rewarded. So what does stop me to just create a validator who creates blocks which are empty all the time? To like your stake. Mm-hmm. Uh, others can uh, like decide that you you are doing bad and like destroy you. Well, you you, you will need you will need to implement first. You will need to implement near core in a way that will just yeah ignore yeah. Pro- pro- produce like including chunks. Second, uh, you will need enough stake to join the validator pool, and to do that, you will need three uh, million year tokens. Yeah. Um, Even more, yeah. But like, what if the current validator just like Bison Trails figures out? Oh, instead of just validating, I can just change the code to produce empty blocks. Yeah, but there aren't multiple validators producing block, or I'm wrong. Uh, well, well they, they, they can... like that. They definitely can do that. That that will make the rest of the validators uh, working harder, uh, meaning that they will need to process the transactions. I'm not sure how exactly we mitigate such a behavior. If we watch for that at all. No, not now. Uh, I don't think we do it now. That's why I got like uh, I know there was like some penalty thing, but like it's not working right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I like, guess like, Bowen would be the best. Like uh, Snash. Yeah. yeah. And and like from my perspective, uh, having uh, the proof of stake is actually like uh, I don't think if you have a validator node like uh, which enough to run near core. Uh, that it's too hard for you to produce not uh, not em- non empty blocks. Like it's not so hard for you as producing empty blocks. Like we're not proving the work, so it's kind of not very heavy stuff. So I guess it's useless to hug the node and risk your stake uh, to to get this like hacky it's hacky thing. Yeah, but like as long as you don't get slashed, you don't care, and other people don't care. They staked you because you just kind of. Uh, yeah, I guess it will be once, once we get with slashing mechanisms in place, that, that would be uh, like considered again. Because well, we we don't have slashing right now. Slashing is the mechanism which is essentially banning the node and getting their uh, stake uh, from them. Currently, it's not enabled. We have some code, but it's not very well tested, and it it seems to have some bugs when we can see consider uh, multi sharding, sharding. Uh, so that's the problem. So, so uh, currently, you can delegate your tokens to any uh, validator because you don't care, and if uh, something went wrong, you will get your uh, yeah. delegated tokens back. Yeah, the, 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 one, the one worst slashing. Thing... Yeah, yeah, one slashing will work, 
uh, you are uh, risked as well uh, to lose your delegated tokens. It's, it's actually de debatable. Like the, there was a debate re uh, be when we had like before mm -hmm. mainnet launch, and there were different ideas whether we should uh, slash the delegators as well or sh we shouldn't. Uh, I can send you a link if necessary. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I, I got to run. I have back-to-back -back meeting here. Uh, so uh, you, you can maybe share some of your experiences uh, among each Yeah, other. I, I, I guess so, uh, this topic is kind of big enough uh, to split. So I, I guess we will, we will better continue next time. Uh, yeah, sounds good to me. To be continued. See you. Yeah, yeah, see thank you guys. You. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.